So there's a, a large degree of being able to hear from God. If we're going to be able to do what our Father is doing, you know, there's a large degree of being able to hear from God that's dependent on us hearing from God. Mm -hmm. So um, once again, how do we as leaders begin to train people on how to hear from God and get them at a point where they can begin to hear God for themselves and then, you know, also others speak into their life concerning their gifts and callings? Well, one of the things we need to do is reinforce reinforce for them that they do hear God. Um, the scripture says, John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's stated very uh, plainly, and there's no room for uh, wiggle there. It's, it doesn't say my sheep may hear my voice. It says the sheep mm -hmm. hear That's his right. voice. That's right. And so we have to overcome, uh, we, have, we as the body have to overcome this doubt that we hear God. And leaders should be very clear that they hear God. Mm -hmm. And between the relationship between the leaders and those that are being matured, um, what should happen is that those that are being matured come to a place where they're confident that they hear God. Right. Uh, once again, it's that format of being able to allow people to express what they're hearing from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, especially, you know, so many leaders I find at times is concerned that the person will say something that's contrary to, you know, what they feel that should be said or may say something that will jeopardize their reputation. And so when you have all of these prerequisites in your head, as far as, you know, you have to say the exact or right thing, uh, or, you know, we, we don't want you to say anything, how will one ever c come about confirming that they heard from God? Well, this is the, this is the, the big thing. I mean, when, when the Lord has put a gift in us, before he formed us. Mm -hmm. It's the way that, that is gonna be the way we express ourselves. And the Lord doesn't make cookie cutter people. You know, uh, you know we, can, we can benefit from the way other people express things, the way other people see things, mm -hmm. uh, the way that they, they have their perspective on things. And that rounds out and completes the whole, the whole process. But if we're only going to do things one way because, you know, uh, we're intimidated or uh, we're insecure or we want to be in control, whatever the uh, the thing would be there, um, we've got we've got to realize that we need the other gifts in the body of Christ. Amen. It's just not a, you know, a one person or a two person show. This this is a body, right? And the body functions. A many-membered body. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Amen. The, the thing, the way you described it, Dana, uh, part of the problem is there is this concern, or the issue is context. If, if the context of a meeting is to get some idea across so that someone responds, then everything is subject to that idea. Mm. If our whole goal is maturing people, then what happens in a given meeting is about maturing people, right. not about trying to attract other people. And if, if everything that we're doing is about trying to attract other people, we will stifle the people that are already there. Um, what is most attractive, quite frankly, is that people are being matured. And we're so concerned about trying to fill the seats that we get people in seats and then try to mold them in such a way that, that all they're about is bringing other people in as opposed to being who God made them to be. Mm. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at the Word of God. Let's look at some people who were called. Mm -hmm. um, from the very beginning, we saw Abraham who was called to be a father of many nations. And, mm -hmm. and we see how God worked that all out. We see on up Moses called to be a deliverer. You know, and um, we see also he worked um, with a prophetic grace. You know, the Lord talked about how he was a prophet. And he interceded mm -hmm. and for, the, mm -hmm. um, for those who he needed to at times. And all the way up to the Apostle Paul, who was called to carry <laughs> uh, 
uh, a burden, you know, mm -hmm. for the Lord's mm -hmm. namesake and also to deliver a word to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. you know. So when we see calling in the Bible, it's apparent that um, there's sort of a, uh, what I call a commission, mm -hmm. a commissioning by the Lord that that person is supposed to accomplish something uh, in time and space, you know, while they exist on the earth through the, you know, through means of the Lord working through them in their bodies. Amen. All right. So that's how I look at calling. How do you guys view calling? If somebody was to ask you, um, I'm not sh quite sure, you know, what a calling is. I'm not quite sure if I'm called, mm -hmm. you know, how would you start off really helping a person uh, understand calling? Well, um, a call really simply is an invitation. And the Lord is inviting everyone to walk in the manner that they were designed to walk. Mm -hmm. And that's what a calling is. It, it, we tend to think of a calling as um, something that, uh, some big issue that's gonna affect uh, trillions of people. In certain cases, it may be so. Uh, in Andrew's case, maybe it was just to make sure his brother Peter came. Mm. Whatever the case is, God is inviting you to live under his rule in such a way that what was in his mind before you were born comes out in time and space. And that's simply what it is. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that, that's good. I think that, uh, you know, the uh, delusion that we, we, we suffer under is that you know, God's going to do something great, big thing through me. And that's basically because my ego is bigger than it should be. <laughs> you know, we think about, uh, you know, we're going to have 10,000 churches in our, in our group and throughout the world, and we're going to have a million members in our church or whatever that is. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, you know, always the, the prophecies that come across that, you know, God's going to start sending people to your church. You know, this is, and, and that just strokes my ego. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, those, those are the kinds of things where um, we've got to just go back and just be with the Lord and mm -hmm. do whatever. Absolutely. The little things. Um, you know, not so, not so the, the big things. Right. That's good. So just acknowledge God in the little things and he'll continue to unveil. Of course. Of course. You know, because it's almost as if, Everything that we have within us, mm -hmm. that God has placed within us, as far as our calling, our gift, it's almost as if the Lord is just unveiling it. Surely. You know, it's almost mm -hmm. like an unveiling. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story that reminds me of this unveiling is the story where Peter, I think it's in Matthew chapter number 16, when Jesus confronts the apostles and asks them, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, some says he's John the Baptist. Some say he's Elijah or one of the prophets. And Peter speaks up and says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. So by revelation, you know, he, he had a revelation of who Jesus actually was mm -hmm. and is. And therefore, Jesus in turn says, you know, Simon Barjona, you know, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father in heaven Therefore, I will call you Peter, uh -huh. you know, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Uh -huh. So when he had a personal revelation of who Jesus was, uh -huh. when he had a revelation by the Lord, because when Jesus asked a question, it's so easy to just go to your mind and think about your day and think about what you hear other people saying, or if you read the newspaper that day, most of the disciples spewed off what they had probably heard or, or around their families mm -hmm. or in the crowd. And mm -hmm. here is Peter, instead of relying on his rationale and his natural ability, he responds to an inward revelation mm -hmm. from, from the Father mm -hmm. and says, no, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So do you guys believe that when a person um, gets more acquainted with the Lord and walk more in fellowship with the Lord, it's... Is that type of revelation the Lord will allow them to know what he actually desires for them to be and do? Absolutely, and it, this is why as, <clears throat> as leaders, as fathers in the, in the body of Christ, this is where we need to encourage our sons mm 